Welcome, I'm Olivier Girard and this is the second video for artists and painters together with the great Jason Morgan who is advising me on the issues that are faced by painters. I'm here to this time give you some solutions. So this is a follow-up of the first video that we had on analyzing the posture issues in artists. What we discussed in the first video is that we have two problem areas. Number one is the lower back, number two is the neck and shoulder area. So we'll start now with the lower back and later we'll discuss neck and shoulder region. One advice, take a pen and a paper because there will surely be loads of information that you can reuse here to change your setup. So this is the moment for you to get better. What we will do is we will discuss always at three levels, which are the three levels that we have as occupational health professionals when we advise companies. Level one is everything that we can do at technical level. It's the most efficient level because everything that the machine does does not need to be stored somewhere inside your brains or to be a new habit. Level two is the organizational factor, i.e. what you do with the time factor. Level three is the behavioral factor, which is the most difficult. It's related to your habits, to what you do with your muscles and your joints. So first we discuss everything that we can do at technical level and in part one at technical level for the lower back. This touches therefore the issue of your chair. To choose a chair well, well, let's first shortly discuss what it is to sit properly. Look. The problem with sitting is the following, it's fairly visual. Gravity, mother gravity say, will always bring you downwards into a slouched posture. Okay? So if you don't want this to happen, the one minute version of the sitting posture, and if you want more detail, check the description below. I will link a number of videos that will help you get deeper into the topics that we, uh, that we discuss. But the one minute version on how to sit properly is you should have your feet on the ground so that you can get a push that will bring you at the back of your chair where your pelvis, i.e. your belt, will meet this lower part of the backrest which is called the lumbar support. And the lumbar support is what will prevent your pelvis from tilting backwards, therefore will prevent you from slouching. What is a neutral sitting posture? It is therefore when you sit on your sitting bones against the lumbar support. A good chair is a chair that allows you to do this. Okay? So this is a good chair. This is a less good chair. Because on this one, I have nothing to stabilize my belt. Plus, if I want to be on the sitting bones, after 10 minutes, I'm going to burn my sitting bones because it's so hard. As a painter, you want your chair to support you, including when you go towards your painting. So you see that the best chair has a backrest that goes quite far forward, not necessarily always, but it can at least follow you when you go forward. So this is the case with this one, but there are some chairs that go even further. What you don't want anyway is a chair that has this as the most forward position. Because you see on such a chair, my posture will be this, i.e. far away from the painting. How can you decide whether the chair has this feature or not? You need to test. They are not 5,000 solutions. This chair model is the one that Jason has just purchased for himself and he has told me that the chair is great. It is a Kinops plus eight model. So I know by experience, by his experience, that this is a satisfactory share for uh, painters. For me, say as an office worker, it's also a great chair. Now, there are two other chair types that I'd like to um, suggest for you as a painter if you have a bit more budget. Type number one would be the Capisco. Capisco has an interesting feature, which is a shorter seat pan. You see, on this Kinops chair, if I raise the seat pan, my thighs will move vertically and my heels will go off the ground. Therefore, I will tend to slide forward and be away from the backrest. On the Capisco chair, as the seat pan is shorter, well, instead of your um, thighs going 
upwards like this and raising your heels from the ground, your thighs will open, your knee will open, so you will stay on the ground but be able to sit higher. This is quite interesting for posture variation, but it's also interesting to limit how much you need to raise your shoulder when you work in the upper areas of the drawing. The second type of chair that I'd like to mention is the saddle. The saddle chair, preferably with a backrest, because as I've discussed, it's important that you can transfer your upper body weight to the chair. The saddle chair is limited to four hours per day. This is because you have pressure on the inner thighs and you don't want to, uh, to, to be for too long on such a chair. However, the great thing about it is that as you also sit a bit higher, your knees are less in the way and that allows you to go closer to your painting. So especially for those of you guys who draw with very fine details and who need a short working distance, having a chair that allows you to sit at more than 90 degrees whilst being well supported on the backrest is a good idea. So this is what we can say at technical level regarding your chair. There's one other thing maybe, is that it touches actually the organizational level, is that your lower back needs to be well supported, but on the other hand, you cannot sit for more than 30 minutes in a row. After that, your lower back will be compressed. So if you want to paint, say in a more continuous fashion, say the whole day, well, you need to sit, stand, sit, stand, sit, stand. Therefore, there's something else that you need to do at technical level, is make sure that you can stand while paint, painting. This means get a, a, a stand that can go high enough and also make sure that the room in which you paint is uh, high enough uh, above your head, say, so that you don't need to destroy your head as soon as you stand up. And that has actually led me to tell you already the important thing at organizational level, which is that you should not stay on your chair for more than 30 minutes in a row. It doesn't mean that you should stop painting after 30 minutes because you could be uh, say, painting in a different posture, i.e. standing. What would make me advise you to take regular breaks is more than what happens in the neck and shoulder area, because, you know, if I paint sitting and then I paint standing, yeah, of course I give a break to my lower back, but I don't give a break to my neck and shoulder areas, which keep holding my arm and uh, holding the, the weight of, of my arm forward. So say you get a break in the lower back, but not in the neck and shoulder region. Last level regarding the lower back, behavioral. Behavioral is, as I told you, make sure that you sit on your sitting bones. There's a simple test, you know, you can either sit on your hands and when you say sit on your hands, you'll feel your sitting bones. You'll feel that when you slouch, your sitting bones are in front of you, whilst here, you're on your sitting bones, that's neutral, and when I have a hollow back, my sitting bones are behind me. So make sure that you're on your sitting bones. That's the first way to recognize a neutral sitting posture. The second way is to uh, observe that when you slouch, there's like the vertebrae popping out in your back. It's like, you know, a, a crocodile in your back. And when you sit neutral, the crocodile has just disappeared. So this is your second way to observe if you sit with a flat back or not. Now, um, so basically sitting against the lumbar support on your sitting bones is a behavioral, say, measure. What's more tricky is when you want to, say, go towards the painting, what you should not do is, say, stick your lower back on the, on, on the chair and move with the sternum, because that would uh, hollow your back, you see? What you need to learn is how to turn in your hip joint angle, i.e. how to turn with a flat back, okay? And that will allow you to actually go closer to the painting, but of course you can't hold it for too long like this, because for the lower back holding your upper body gets difficult, hence you need to go back. If this needs to be sustained, there's something else you need to do, such as move your chair closer to the painting. And here again, we go on the discussion with where are your knees and are they interacting with the painting? 
There you can also observe that if you manage to fit your knees and lower legs under the painting, you will be able to get closer to it. So that has something to do with the type of stand that you, that you make or that you use.